Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my show, Friday PM. My name is Luigi Scarcelli. We got a great show for you tonight. Uh, we have the music of Jacob McCurdy. Uh, he does some great songs, and we sit down and talk a little bit, uh, as well as filmmaker Taden uh, George, I think. It used to be Brown. He'll tell us a little more about that. But he won the uh, best uh, film at the Winter Challenge. So it's a lot of fun talking to him. Uh, let's get started with a song from Jacob, uh, and then we'll catch up to uh, the film after that. Thanks a lot. All right, my name's Jacob McCurdy, and this song's called Werewolf. It's about how people change. A werewolf, werewolf, werewolf stare. Looking in her eyes, beware, beware. She's ready to show me the moon is in full. She's already changed and will never know. Are we supposed to be? The songs were awesome. Thank you. Exactly. So you were at Belfast. You went to school. Uh, you said, I think you said at a University of New England School of Communications. Yep. 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 New, New England Communications. So it's now a part of Huston College. So I think technically I have a degree that doesn't 
belong to a real school it doesn't anymore. Exist anymore yeah. Right? yeah. Like but it, but they, it, it really does. But right, uh, right. but I studied audio engineering um, and got a bachelor's there, and I th I thought I was gonna just be in the studio recording other people's right, music. Right. And Sound and right. I remember for my senior project, um, you're supposed to record somebody. So a, a buddy of mine, Matt Smith, that I met at a, working at a summer camp, um, he came up and and I recorded ten songs for him, but. Uh, and there was a, it was a fun project for sure, but one of my classmates was like, "Yo, I think I'd like to record you. Can I?" Can right. And I was like, "Are you kidding? Like, I'm gonna work 30 hours a week, go to school full time, record somebody else, and then you're gonna record me as well?" He's like, "Yeah, man, it's gonna be great." And I was yeah. like, "Sure." <laughs> right. But even at that time, I think he asked me over like, um, it must have been the fall semester of senior year, and over winter break, um, my buddy Adam Hansen and I wrote 10 songs together. Um, and we had no idea what we were doing, right. but we we put them all together, and I and I put out a, a record in 2011. Um, I can't believe that I'm even telling you guys this because I don't even want anybody to go listen to it right. now at this Keep point. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But if you do a little digging, you can find it, and and there are some of those tunes that I'm I'm certainly proud of. But right, right, right. Um, but Different it was 11 time. yeah it was 11 years ago. Right. You know you. Um, well, so you uh, you you graduated from there, and then I think you were telling me that you. Packed your bags and made yeah, a, a trip. I did. I, I packed my bags and I and I drove out to L.A. Yeah. Um, some of my classmates ended up getting jobs out there, and I was like, "Yeah, that'd be fun. Like, I just want to go and be check out California and see what it's about." That's where my parents were from um, before they moved here and, and then had me. And so I had some family out there, and and uh, we kind of took our sweet time getting out there. Like, went to Nashville and went to Bonnaroo and like spent some time in the Rockies and hit the Grand Canyon you know it was a it was a fantastic trip but by the time I get to, to California I had, had like no money left to my name right, and I'm right. sitting there like just trying to get a job at Starbucks and like nobody would even take me because I was overqualified because I had a degree right um, exactly. so which is you know probably for the best because then I, I ended up moving back to Colorado for a little while um, I've got a half brother out there and he was gracious enough to let me have his couch for two months while I kind of tried to get on my feet. And uh, and then eventually a, a friend of mine was visiting from England back here in, in Maine and he was like, Jake, what do you mean you're not going to be around when I get there? Like, you have to come back. And I was like, I don't even have enough money to drive back there, man. Like I, but And I was like, but there's this gig that I finally booked for next week. And uh, once I have that, then I'll be able to like have enough gas money to get home and he's like well how much does the gig pay and I was like yeah it's just like 100 bucks 150 bucks you know just like standard bar gig right and uh and he's like well there's 150 bucks waiting for you when you get here and I was like oh my god so I'm I'm sitting there in Colorado I mean it's beautiful there's like oh I love it out there it was so sweet but that night I just like packed up my bags and I left and I like texted my half brother I was like yo man uh I'm actually heading home and he's like wait what what happened yeah. um but anyways, I, I digress, and I ended up spending a, a year up at, at Orno living with some, some buddies of mine from college and started playing at, like, Woodman's Bar and Grill um, and uh, the Bear Brew and, you know, just, like, playing the college bars and put together a couple different projects while I was up there, and it was a blast. Because um, I think that you had said that, that, that it, it was, this was the dilemma about whether you write your own songs or you can get kind of stuck in being the cover right. guy. Exactly. And so you had, you had you know written your songs and that had been something you really enjoyed because yeah, you're an sure. artist. For but sure. you started playing other people's songs and right. started paying the bills with exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah? That's exactly it. And so then at that point, uh, I mean, it wasn't really in, like until a year later when I moved to Portland that things started to take off a little bit more because there's just more, more places to play. Right. Um, there's more opportunities. But then you play three or four or five shows in a week. When you get home, you're not going to be like, I'm going to sit down and write a song, and it's going to be so much fun. No, you're exhausted. You just want to go home and go to bed. So that leads me to the question of, uh, like, is there, is there a different path nowadays as a musician than it used to be, where it was like you try to get a record deal, you move to L.A., you get a record deal, you sell right. a record. Now it's, you were telling me it's like, Really different landscape. It, I think it, I think it is. There's you know, I think there's still an opportunity to get a, a record deal um, for for some folks, but there's so many independent musicians that are you know you can make a good living doing it all yourself. Sure, it's a lot more work, but as as things become more like as your your project grows and and you you have more fans and you're playing bigger shows, then at that point that's when you can start bringing in bringing a in. couple other people to to help you run it. But there was. Um, there's a great book that I, I read a, f a few years back called um, How to Make It in the New Music Business, and it's by Ari Herstand. 
I highly recommend reading it. There's some great information in there. Some of it might be um, like stupid common sense things. Where you're like, well, duh, of course right, that makes exactly. sense. But right. um, but there's a lot of different avenues that you can take if you're booking college shows um, or you're just self-promoting your own stuff. But a at a certain point, um, if you don't, you know, you, either you're going to find out that you don't love playing the music and because you're not making enough money, or 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 maybe it'll take off, you know, and, and there's stepping stones. But there's also, um, you know, I feel like there have been so many bands that have taken record deals and then they get screwed over. Um, right, you know, right. So it's... Uh, you're just kind of a slave to the label. Right, you and know, you don't, you're not able to create the music that you want to. So, I don't know, just take it day by day and, and try and... And I mean, enjoy what and you it, do. Yeah, right? exactly. That's part of it. Right. Yeah. So... so like, uh, but while I have you here, do you yeah. have any shows coming up? We'll probably be, you know, playing this in, in early March. Do you have things coming up yeah. in March? Yeah. Um, April. Well, April 29th, I'm playing at the 1800 Club okay. in Lewiston. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I just got confirmed that uh, that we're playing at the City Winery in Boston. Yeah. Um, on July 8th with the Eric Marks Band, which should be super fun. Um, and that that 1800 Club show is with. Uh, the Johnny Clay Shanks band and and Xander Nelson, Xander also, Nelson. Yeah. Um, which should be a lot of a lot of fun to just. I mean, they're they're all just like good buddies of mine, so right. I'm sure we'll all just get to jam and and have a good time. Have a good time. Um, but as as of right now, that's the only big like original shows that I have in the books. But you can always just check the website and see what's going on. And what's that website again? Uh, just JacobMcCurdyMusic.com. Music .com. Yeah. Appreciate my, you my being pleasure. here. My pleasure. This next song is called uh, For the Weekend. And it's uh, about how a lot of people tend to save everything for the weekend. They're like, oh, I just got to work. No, I'm tired. I don't want to do that thing. I'd rather, let's just do that on the weekend. And uh, sometimes the weekend doesn't show up. So just live, live your life during the week. Just enjoy it. Yeah, it's called For the Weekend. She said, save it for the weekend, you know I can't stay up too late. Save it for the weekend, I'm all on the road to complete.
thank Jacob McCurdy uh, for the songs and sitting down and talking to me. Uh, next up, we're going to see the film that won the Winter Challenge, Love is a Dog, and then talk to Tayden afterwards. Uh, it's an interesting film and a very interesting interview. So I hope you stay for it and I hope you like it. Thanks. Hi, everyone. All right, let's get started. Sadie, down. Bed, please. Bed, please. Awesome. All right, sorry about that. Hi, everyone. Let's get started. So for our first move, we're using our arms. Now we're going one, two, double, double. Let's do that again. Five, six, seven, eight. We go. It's not what it looks like. It's no day.
Hey everybody, welcome back. I want to thank Jacob McGurdy for uh, playing a couple songs and talking to me. Uh, right now, I am here with this Taden Brown, correct? Braco. Taden Brown, okay. Yeah, no, it was Taden Brown, but I got married a couple years ago, and uh, my wife and I changed our names to Braco. Really? Inter yeah. This is an interesting story right here. <laughs> is that a, an amalgam of the two names? Or? A little bit. Her yeah. last name okay. was Greg, uh, okay. and so it kind of sounds like it could be a combination, but it's actually, I'm a huge nerd, it's actually from The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so is it Grego with a G? Brago. Brago. B R E G O. So we just had a chance to uh, watch your film. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this process of, of the winter challenge. It's different than the 48 hour film festival in the sense that it's a 72 hour or 72 hours? 72 yeah, hours. Which is several more, you know, it's a few more days or twice as much time, I guess, somewhere around there. Yeah, so the 48, you know, you have uh, two days to write shoot, edit, and submit a movie. Uh, and the 72, it's that, that extra day does a lot. Yes, <laughs> For me, right, it was pre-production. Right. Pre Having a little bit extra time to work on the script and to prep the set and art direct and rehearse with actors. It's such a creative process compared to a lot of other film festivals that really want uh, to be you doing everything on your own and then they come in and say up or down uh, this is like, hey, we're in it all together. I mean, it's totally different. So, so much more collaborative in a sense. Absolutely. I mean, we started out, we, have a, we had a big writing team. Uh, everybody got together at my house and just kind of sat down like, okay, what do we want to make this right. weekend? We have no ideas prior to this. Let's, let's just start, you know, start spitballing. Yeah, and so the film, uh, let's talk about the team because you told me it's a really big team and that's interesting by itself. And then we'll talk about the movie. So the team, how many people were on this team? We had 23 people, cast and crew included. Right. So it was myself, my brother and sister. Uh, we had Jeff Grichy is a, a local cinematographer. He was the guy who shot the movie. And his partner, Mariah Bergeron, was the lead. OK. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. So it's a big group, collaborative. You're all having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you find a lot of locations? You had these already lined up? Or? Yeah, so well, we actually just shot it at my house. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, that works. like, let's keep it simple. Yeah. We knew that the, the snowstorm was coming that weekend, and we're like, we don't want to deal with right. anybody <laughs> driving in uh, inclement weather. And, and so we, we kept it simple. Uh, my writer, Ian Carlson, came up with this idea of, of a woman who essentially decides that she she needs to have this this person's dog right, right. That, that's yeah, her dog exactly. now, you know right. and uh, decides to, to break in and steal it it's a very uh, interesting concept in the sense of commenting on you know American social media American kind of capitalism everybody kind of you know that this desire to have what other people have I mean I'm sure it's a universal theme but it, it conceptualizes that in a very interesting way that she wants her dog yeah, and she's gonna steal it. Yeah, we pulled we pulled thriller as our genre. Like, what's more scary than someone breaking into your home and you know taking what's yours? Right. I mean, and, and, and kid I, I love dogs, and so that would be you know like one of my worst nightmares having a, my dog stolen. So like, uh, what is upcoming for you? Do you have any new ideas of what you want to work on in the future? Or? Well, really, I'm focused on finishing up um, some projects I just wrapped. Uh, my first feature. Yeah. It's called uh, From the Morning to the Night. Yep. And that is currently making its festival. Run. Is there a way, because uh, we talked about that briefly, is there a way that we could see a trailer online? Or is there any different, well, maybe? Yeah, I have, a, I have a trailer on YouTube. Um, yeah. I'll yeah, send yeah. you the link. You can post it in the description. Sure. I'll post that link, the, the film. It's going to be coming up in the festival circuit. You'll probably be able to see it at some point on Amazon. Uh, from morning until night. From the morning to the night. From yeah. the morning to the night. Yeah, it's about a brother and sister who are struggling with heroin addiction and it follows them over a, a three year period. It's yeah. definitely very topical. Yeah. yeah, I started making the movie in 2015 and uh, it took me about three years to finish. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Labor of love. Very much so. It was, you know, weekend here, weekend there. I, I uh, definitely called in every favor I had. <laughs> right, exactly. It does. It takes a village. Yeah. Uh, Taden, thank you very much for your time. Hey, I thank appreciate you so it. much. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you later. Good night.